Your Honor, I have a question. Michael Loyal with Loyola Environment, just a concerned citizen from Newport. Um, my question to the panel really is, we haven't heard much about livable wages this evening, and you know, I know the issue of poverty is complicated, but how far would a livable wage in the city of Cincinnati go toward alleviating poverty? And right now, where does the movement for livable wages stand? Who wants to start? I'll, I'll start. Well, one thing the Free Star Food Bank has done uh, two and a half years ago, we talked to our board and talked to our funders, and we said, first thing we want to do is set an example. So we created a baseline compensation for an entry-level position at the Free Star Food Bank of $14 an hour. That was set at basically 200% of a of poverty level for a family of three. So we basically started there, and we used to go to our funders now and say, this is what we're doing. How can you help? Okay. Craig began. Anybody down there that wants to address? Peter? Uh, I just think a livable wage is a no-brainer. You know, there's a huge movement. There's a huge storyline. If we can't afford it, so people asking whether you want ketchup with your fries, you know, they're not going to drive McDonald's out of business. And Robert? Robert? Well, yeah, I, I have two concerns about it. And the first is the, the uh, mandated minimum wage or higher wage by government nationwide or any large area is going to lead to some people not being able to hire people. It's going to reduce the availability of jobs. And that is particularly a problem for people who are most in need, whose skills are most at the edge, people coming back from prison, people who really need a first job. So I would be concerned about a, a, a significant raise in the minimum wage uh, because of people who I really care the most about. It's not really an anti-poverty program. It could really hurt people in poor, who are poor. The other thing is, is that whenever we talk about the wage, we also should recognize that we've created, whether we like it or not, a very significant work support system that does shore up low wages, especially for single parents with children in the household. So while they may make eight or nine dollars an hour, they're eligible for a four thousand dollar earned income tax credit. They're eligible for food stamp benefits. They're eligible for um, child care assistance in some cases. So we do have this elaborate system that shores up wages for people who have children in the household, and it is successful in making work pay. And we shouldn't ignore it and just pretend it's not there. So it, it's a complicated issue, and I think if we put all our chips in solving the poverty program by a higher minimum wage, I'm not sure we'll make as much progress as we'd like. Running short on time, Greg wants to comment. It's just, I, yeah, I, I disagree. I mean, I, I think that there have been, over the past several decades, so many pressures on wages. They're going down, and we have to do everything in our community to change that trend. And Kurt, gave a great example if you are committed to higher wages uh, it doesn't mean that you're going to eliminate jobs i don't think kurt has eliminated a single job he's just increased wages that's what we that's the kind of commitment we need from all of our employers all right yes, well, then I'm